Shalom, family. All praises to the Most High Power. Family, what you are looking at is Big Judah's thumbnail in regards to the video he made last night uh, about a show on Netflix called Sea Spiracy. He suggested that you guys go and watch it. So I paused his video and I went to watch the documentary. I'm really not a documentary dude, but I said, let me go and check it out. It was very disturbing. What these people are doing on the ocean is straight up demonic. Disrespecting the ocean, defiling the ocean, killing the life in the ocean. The Father has given us these waters as a blessing to us. But what they have done to it is evil, to say the least. So we're going to go in a little bit. Gonna add a few more things to this video because after I watched it, 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 it sat in my heart because I love the oceans. I love Sarael. I love the ocean. The ocean is blessed with, with a surmountable amount of medicine. The, the, the oceans are blessed with life with varieties of life and things that are in the ocean we don't even know about but the things that we know of in the ocean they're being destroyed right before our eyes i mean you must go and watch this video so now we know where to direct our prayers to exactly where to direct our prayers to this video sat in my heart because i love the ocean i love the waters as you all know I go there often, I pray with the family, I share with you guys. I love the waters. When those cities of light will start to come out of the ocean, I'm going to go into one of them to live in them. I already know this. I love the oceans and it is disrespectful that the Father has given us these oceans as a blessing to us. You know, but since we're not ruling the world, Right? When the wicked rule, the people suffer. So since we're not ruling the world, we don't have any authority on the oceans. So the other nations do what they want to do. But this is what I want you to know today. These are not people. These, these entities that are in charge of our waters, they are not people. You'll see after I... After this video, you see exactly what I mean. I won't go ahead of myself. So I'll let Big Judah talk a little bit. And then I'll go in. Remember, the Father says, in the last days, I have cursed the waters. He, he didn't curse the life in the water, the lives, the, the, crea the creation that, that he created and put in the water. No. He cursed these organizations. These companies that are doing business on the waters, you know, you know, because our people had sovereignty on the waters. Remember King Abinus, King Abinus in Abiyan, which is ancient word for England, had sovereignty on the waters. The father blessed them with a kingdom, uh, a queen, a, a, a prince, beautiful things. And he gave them sovereignty on the water. And when Napoleon went to, to fight with King Abinus, King Abinus will take him right on the ocean and destroy his army. You know, we, we trade on the ocean the, in the Gospel of Barnabas. Barnabas' father built beautiful ships to sail across the oceans. Right? You know all about it. And so the waters in the ocean for us have always been a blessing, Right? We only have a lot of videos talking about our, our dominion, our sovereignty on the oceans given to us by our Father. But what these people are doing right now, they're, they're doing something wicked. Like some, this, is, this is totally demonic. You got to go and watch the video as, as he suggested. Watch the episode, the documentary on Netflix and get the drop yourself. But after I watched it, I had, I had to do a response video. I had to. So let me let me homie talk for a sec.
Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, give all praise to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray the Most High blesses this lesson this evening. Gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand events that are currently happening on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Brethren, <clears throat> listening to some other people from other stations, some of these prepper people, and they're given the news, but then they try to give us their Christian understanding of what's going on and how to be saved. They're admitting, you know, that the world is a mess. They're admitting about the things about the pollution and the destruction. And it's like, okay, well, I get you guys are now admitting this. And you've written about the corruption. But then you say that in one hand, but then in the other hand, you say Jesus is coming back to fix all of the corruption, to fix all of the pollution. To save us from ourselves because we're destroyed. All right, so I'm going to stop it right there for now. Now, you heard what the big homie said, right? So let me just fast forward this a little bit. I just want to show you this part. It says, when the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. Okay? So let's go further up. You know, you have to watch the video yourself. But I just want to show you. A few things. Empty oceans by 2048. What else I want to show you? 50% of the species on the earth could go extinct by 2050. On average, shark kills around 10 people per year. But in comparison to that, we kill 11,000 to 30,000 sharks per hour. So they're not killing enough of us, to tell you the truth. When the righteous thrive, okay, we just read that. That's Proverbs, that's Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. Proverbs 29 and 2. Let's keep going. I want to show you a few things before I go into my video. Uh, okay, hold up. Let me see something here. It's not showing me what I want to show you. Let me see, hold up. Um, so you see, you see the blood, you see this, look at that. You see the blood, look at this. You see the bloodbath, right? You see that? The same judgment. Now these animals are being slaughtered and murdered. They didn't ask for this war at all. But you're going to know today that these are not people these are classified as something else. So let me go in. Let's get out of here. Let's go in. Let's go in here real quick. All right. Where do I want to begin? Let's see. All right, let's go to the keys of Enoch. Key 118. Let's focus on here real quick. I, I, I did a video on this the other day, but let's, let's go in here real quick and, and, and get this dropped. Get this understanding. Keys of Enoch, Keys 118, page 169. Behold now, the marvelous plan taking place among the children of light. A divine plan has been issued to balance the earth. The, see that? A divine plan has been issued to balance the earth's and men's violation of the cosmic law of light and love what you what you have seen in this documentary con, uh cispiracy what big judah explained in his video is a is a blatant violation of cosmic law the cosmic law of light and the cosmic law of love these people have no love and they have no light in them the light in them is darkness 
Okay? These people are violating cosmic law. So, when you go to Matthew 6, 23, it says, But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? These people have no light. And what is the light that they don't have? Let's, you'll find that in a moment. So there is a divine plan that has been issued to balance the earth's and men's violation of cosmic law, light, and love. This plan has been issued to negate man's violation and destruction of his atmosphere and his radiation fields, especially through his misuse of atomic energy. Now, I'm reading this. This is not in regards to atomic energy. This is in regards to man's violation of cosmic law. Okay? He also caused destruction to many biological kingdoms on his planetary life station. You see that? So, the ocean has a biological kingdom that these people are causing destruction, violating cosmic law, light, and love. So, there is a what? There is a plan, a divine plan that has been issued to balance the earth. To do what exactly? Let's go to number four. Before we go to number four, let's reread number three, bottom part. Men has caused destruction to many biological kingdoms on this, on his planetary, on our planetary life station. Okay? Men has shown that he has lost control of this planet. You see that? These people have totally lost control of this planet by virtue of the danger they not only present to themselves, but to us, to the surrounding planetary environment. By their pursuit of atomic energy, which we're not, we're not talking about, okay? By their pursuit, I would say here, of money, by the pursuit of money. In addition, the consoles that govern our planetary field have also observed men's desire to extend his planetary society to other planetary regions without spiritual understanding. These, these things, I'm not even going to call them men, these things, these are not even people. They are violating cosmic law. They are violating and destroying biological kingdoms on this planet. Now, they want to expand their, um, their society to other planetary regions without spiritual understanding. Remember, they don't, have, they don't have any light in them. They violate cosmic law, light, and love. Now they want to expand. They have no spiritual understanding because they are void of light. The light that is in them is darkness. Furthermore, they are still using a technology of death. So, the councils that govern our planetary, planetary systems, these, these are called Council of Nine, okay? And they govern our local universe. And also the Council of Twelve, which governs the new program of creation for our local universe. Because there's a new program coming. There's a new, there's a new order coming. There's the new world order is coming. It is not the men's, the world's world order. It is the father's new world order. And you're going to learn about that tonight. Tonight? Oh, it's daytime. You're going to learn about that a little bit. Soon as I'm done with this video. Okay? In the council of the 144, which is, over, which is the overseer of the spiritual hierarchies, in universes comprising our father universe okay these are the consoles that are in charge of our of our local universe our planet okay and these consoles have been observing these things these so-called men with their desires to expand without spiritual understanding with their technology of death violating uh, cosmic law of love and light causing destruction to the many biological kingdoms in the ocean. 
there has been a divine plan issue to balance that. Okay? There's a cleansing. There's a house cleaning that is being completed throughout the entire universe. You understand? And so now we've read this. Let's get out of here and go somewhere else. I'm going to show you a few things. These are not people. Let's go to the, the book of the remembrance of Enoch. The Essen. Book of Haggai. Essen book of meditation. Now, page 109. I believe it's chapter 4. Let's go right into it. These are not people. These are, they are something else. They don't have, they don't have light. So let's get it. Number one. And it came to pass that in the midst of great wickedness, Enoch became urgent to discover the way back to Eden. Enoch diligently prepared himself to once again stand before the Urim to receive from the Father, right? He about to get the drop. He about to look through Urim to see what's happening. And all the while, the righteous people of the land of Anak prospered. And they began to look to Enoch to guide them in the ways of God. And Enoch besought them often to cling to the ways of the ancient ones in their gentle ways of peace and quietness. Enoch besought the people often to cling to the ways of the ancient ones in their gentle ways of peace and quietness. Now I got two precepts for you right there. You go get that, okay? Now, Enoch, the leader of these people, about to go look through Urim to receive a, re a, a revelation from the Father. Right? And all the while, the people were prospering in the city of Ma'in. They looked to Enoch to guide them in the ways of God. These people that are in charge of the oceans right now, running on our oceans, uh, establishing their shell companies and their shelf companies, you know, have all these organizations that have business on the ocean, they look to Satan to guide them. They look to Satan to guide them, hence why this documentary was so disturbing to me. And the things that are happening are happening because they're being guided by, by Satan, their daddy. Meanwhile, the people of Enoch besought Enoch, and Enoch told them to cling to the ways of the ancient ones. These people that are on the oceans right now doing business on the ocean, killing the ecosystem, they don't give a damn about the ways of the ancient ones. They don't care about the gentle ways of peace of the ancient ones. They don't care about the gentle ways of quietness of the ancient ones. No. They came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. All right? Now listen, the Lord bless the earth for the sake of the righteous. You see, the wicked bring down the judgments of God. But the righteous bring down the blessings. The Lord bless the earth for the sake of the righteous. Because of the prayers, because of the prayers which the righteous had made in behalf of the earth. So now we know now how we're going to have to direct our prayers, specific prayers for the earth. It is not just praying for you and I. We're not just going to pray for our mommies, daddies, brothers, sisters, husbands, and wives. We're not just going to pray for Zion. There is no Zion without the ocean. There is no Zion. There is no Zion without the trees. There is no Zion without the earth. The Father blessed the earth for the sake of the righteous because the righteous need the earth to grow their crops. The righteous need the ocean for medicine, for food. The righteous need the waters of the ocean. The, the righteous need, need the earth. There's no earth. There's no righteous. There's no Zion without the earth. So therefore the father, what, what he did, he blessed the earth for our sakes. And also of the worship of Baraka and the faithfulness of the people. Okay? And their provisions grew and the earth produced for them in abundance. And the waters. What gave, gave them 
of the life which they held. The waters gave the righteous of the life which the waters held. Now, after you watch this conspiracy, you're going to go see now that the life the waters is holding right now is diminishing at such a rapid pace that there's almost no life left in the water. And whatever life is left in the water is being destroyed at a rapid rate. Extremely disturbing. The earth produce for the righteous and abundant and bless the righteous and give the righteous of the life that is in the waters. And the waters give them of the life which they held. Okay? See now, look at number four. Now, I have some precepts on the side for you guys. If you want to check this out, go ahead. I have a few things to discuss. I'm not going to go into every precept. I'm just going to stick to what I, what I wrote down to discuss. But if you go to the kids of Enoch, page 550, number 55, you could see it's, it's right there, right? Let me see. Number four. In the land of Toa, there was a severe drought because they openly rejected Messiah, Mozart the Lamb. You see that? When you openly reject Messiah, Mozart the Son of God, there will be droughts and there will be other natural disasters. Let's keep pushing. Let's keep pushing. You're going to realize these are not people. Okay? These are not people. These are not people. Now, let's see. Let's go to number page 111. Okay. Let's go to number 12. Let's see here. So remember, Enoch is preparing himself to look through Urim. And when the Urim was prepared, Enoch began to look. And the presence of Messiah drew near. And the light of the Lord showed forth. In the stones of the Urim, and tongues of fire were seen to shine. By the equity she in the place called Imara. Now, I did a lesson on this chapter before when I first started my channel about four, four months ago. Right? But this is a different view. Same information, a different, a different perspective. I believe the video is titled the, uh, uh, something about the spirit of intelligence. We'll go. We'll see. And it came to pass that Enoch said, O oh Lord God, this day. I have come here to stand before you to inquire of you so that I may learn of the origins of our first parents. So Enoch won the drop of our, on, on our first parents, right? He want to know their origin. Okay, number 24. And it came to pass that the Lord said, Look, Enoch, and see. For it is the day of Gamal. Right, we're not going to get into the day of Gamal. I'm just going to go in this chapter to extract the information. Now, check this out. For it is the day of Gamal ever to come to the land called Olam. Olam is the name God called the element that found forming elder. And the word Olam means in ancient times, in the beginning of the world. So Olam in ancient time was what? The beginning of the world. Olam is the name God called everything that had a shape in Elder. That found form in Elder. And the word Olam means ancient times in the beginning of the world. You're going to understand better. And it came to pass that Enoch beheld that which is called Olam. Enoch beheld ancient times in the beginning of the world. So he's looking at something from the very beginning. In the very beginning, which is Olam, was exceedingly strange before Enoch. And Enoch said, where, O Lord, is Olam? And the Lord said, in six days I created the heavens, the earth, and all the living souls therein. And I created them spiritually first, and there still was no place for the spirits of life to dwell. 
for the elements of creation had not yet found form to be man or animal or any of the trees or plants of the earth. Father says, on the seventh day after I created everything, I rested. And on that day, the handiwork of my love and truth began to act for itself. And everything that I created began to find form. And the elements of the earth responded back to me and they began to join one with another out of love. They join one with another out of love. Okay? Father says on the, on, on the Sabbath, element had found a form that was pleasing to me. Okay? That I knew in my knowing would show forth my loving kindness in the lives of my children. This is what the Father created. His creation is to show forth His loving kindness in the lives of His children. And it came to pass. Enoch looked and he beheld Olam, where Yatsika dwelt as a child. And Enoch was astonished, for he had never seen something like this before. No sight like it had ever entered his soul. No come before his eyes. And Enoch saw the creatures in Olam. Enoch saw the creatures of the field and the foals of the air. Enoch saw the beasts of the waters and he beheld the creeping things. Now I need you to pay attention to the word creeping things. Enoch saw the creatures of the field. He saw the fowls of the air. He saw the beasts of the waters. And he also saw the creeping things. Enoch saw what would be a strange sight for the eyes of any man to see. For since man became a living soul, no man has ever seen or known what Enoch has seen today. You understand? So Enoch is the first to see what is being shown to him right now. Now what Enoch was seeing was this. Enoch saw the hills, the trees, the plants of the field, and the animals. All that had life. They were very dull of feeling. There was something missing. And the fathers and the mothers there were unattached to their young. And the foals and the beasts and the creatures and the creeping things seem not to love one another. The creeping things seem not to love one another. Remember the word creeping things. We're going to focus on that word. The creeping things didn't love one another. Nor did they have any consideration toward the other forms. Now think about that for a second. These people on the ocean, they don't love. They don't have any consideration one toward the other. In the documentary, that it talks about slavery on the ocean. Some of these workers were kidnapped for 10 years, for 8 years, for 6 years. They would never see their families again. You know, they would meet the, uh, the, the captain. They would have a drink with the captain before they, they, they sail off. They sell off before they will have a, a, a drink with the captain at their first meeting. And the captain will be nice with them just to get them to, to travel. The moment the ship take off, the guy said the captain's disposition changed. He became very rude and disrespectful. He would threaten them even with a gun. They would kill them while they were on board. And they would pack them away in the freezer. Some of them will get thrown overboard. Would never, they would never see their families again. One of the workers said that he was so sad. Some of these young men were being thrown overboard. And their families would never know what happened to them. The creeping things. Enoch was seeing the creeping things from the beginning. They seemed not to love one another. They didn't have any consideration one towards the other. They only dealt with their young so that they could survive. These are the creeping things. The creeping things were without emotion. When you look at this documentary, you're going to see that these people have no emotion 
for the workers. They have no emotion for, for the biological, for the lives, for, the, for, the, for, for nature. They have no emotion. They don't give a damn about the whales. They don't care about the fish. They don't care about the, uh, the sharks. They don't care about the turtles. They don't care about the seals. They don't give a damn about anything on the ocean. They're out to steal, kill, and destroy. By all means necessary, they have to make their money. This is all about the bottom line. See, this is from the beginning. Enoch is looking at a view from the beginning, the very beginning. And he beheld the creeping things. Seem not to love one another. They have no consideration one toward the other. They only dealt with their young so that they could survive. They were without emotion. And all of their spirits were empty. When you watch the Big Judah video and when you watch the documentary, you're going to see that these people who own these companies, who work on these ships, not the workers. The workers now, they are forced to do things that they don't want to do. So I'm not going to put blame on them. They can't even escape their ordeal. They're trapped for the next five, ten years. And if they get to live uh, and, and, and finally get to go home, they're messed up in the head. And those that don't get to go home, they get shot. They get put in the freezer and they get thrown overboard. These people who own those companies, who do business on the oceans, their spirits are empty, just like their ancestors, the creeping things. They are distant toward, toward one another. And everything was isolated. Everything was independent. One toward the other of the kind of it. And they all were very cold-hearted and selfish. And you will see that in, in, in the documentary. These people are very cold-hearted. I just show you. They were, they were in the ocean. Right? Let me see here. Hold up. Look at this. Look at the blood. Look at the bloodshed on the ocean. Now, you mean to tell me these people have any type of emotions? They treat these animals as if this, um, the, this, these beautiful animals can feel this knife going through their heads. Look, look, how they, look at this cut by the neck or this seal or this, this whale, this, this shark. Like Big Judah said in his videos, they used to operate on our women, talk about they don't feel pain, really. The scientists in the documentary said the, the fish, the, the lives in the ocean, the well, the fish, they, they feel pain more than you and I can ever feel pain because their, their ability to, to sense things around them, it, it's, it, it's much more uh, than you and I can ever, can ever feel as human beings. It's more heightened. Thank you, love. It's more heightened. They can feel things that you and I can never feel. They feel things as a unit. They feel things individually. They swim together in one accord because they all use their feelings together as a grid to feel. This is why we do when we pray. I connect with you in Florida. You connect with me in Kentucky. I connect with you in New Mexico. You connect with me in Arizona. I connect with you in California. You connect with me in Connecticut. We in New York. Every one of us prayers connect together as a grid. And we move through the spirit realm together. Our prayers move together to, uh, to the Father. To, it's, it's one prayer. A thousand of us reciting one prayer. Together we're sending up this one prayer in different parts of, the, of this country of the world to our Father so he can come and render justice to our enemies. So this, this, this creation, these creatures in the, in the ocean, they do the same thing. They move together as a unit. They feel, they feel pain. They feel happiness. They feel the anticipation of whatever is going on around them. They feel anxiety. They get sick. They, they um, procreate. They give birth. You understand? They sense danger. They flee the area when there's a tsunami coming. When there's a volcano, an earthquake, animals take flight. These creeping things don't give a damn about that. They are all cold-hearted and selfish. 
These are creeping things. These are not people. You're going to find out why they're not, they're not people and they're called creeping things. And Enoch said they were unclean. These are unclean. Not unclean in the sense of they don't take showers. No. They are unclean. You know why in a second. And ignorance abounded everywhere. And when Enoch beheld what he saw, Enoch shrank back from the sight of it. He had never seen anything pleasant. He had never seen such a thing that was so empty of love. Enoch saw that everything, everyone yielded to the circumstances of the element. Not to one another out of love. There was no love there. There was empty of love. Cold-hearted. They yielded to the circumstances of the moment, which means that if I have to kill you to survive, I'm going to do it. If I have to throw you overboard, I'm going to do it. There's no love. There's no consideration. There's no, okay, let's figure out the best way to do this. No, we're going to yield to the circumstances of the moment. Everything yielded to the present moment of desire. There was no vision of things to come, no understanding of things past. Remember, Enoch says, Enoch says what? Enoch besought the people often to cling to the ways of the ancient ones. Cling to the way of the ancient ones. Their gentle ways are peace and gentleness. These people, they had no vision of things to come, no had any understandings of things past. They don't cling to the ways of the ancient ones. No, they make their own rule. Can nobody get in their way? In the documentary, you're going to see when somebody trying to investigate and report, they get killed, they get murdered, they get kidnapped, never to be seen again. Enoch said, Father God, what am I seeing here? Every, all, the creations here are unhappy. And the father told Enoch, what is now before you is all that they have ever known. Starting with when the element first began to find form until this day. And Enoch says, will they be this way forever? And the Lord said to Enoch, the conditions of Olam are the way they appear before your eyes. Because everyone you're seeing here, these creeping things, they have only two. Of the four spirits of life in them. Now I want you to think about that for a quick second. Father told Enoch. The creeping things. And everything else. In Olam, only have two of the four spirits of life in them. They each have the spirit that gives them life. And they have the spirit of the creator in them, the father in them. They have the spirit that gives them life. And they have the spirit of Alokisir in them. Albeit, they do not know him. And they are thus, after the manner which you see them. Because they only have two spirits of life in them, because there are four spirits of life. They only have two. That's why they are the way they are. They're missing something. What are they missing? They do not have the spirit and presence of the son of my father in them. 
They do not have the spirit and presence of Messiah. Nor do they have the visions of holiness that I used in the day that I persuaded him to create the children of men. Remember, Messiah pled for us to be what? To be created in the presence of the Father as a spirit being. So they don't have the, the spirit of Messiah in them, nor do they have the visions of holiness in them. So what happens when you don't have the spirit of Messiah in you? What happens when you don't have a, 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 the visions of holiness in you? You are just like a creeping thing in Olam. Let's, let's keep reading. You are cold-hearted. You are selfish. You are distant. You are without emotion. You don't have any consideration towards anyone else. You are empty of love. You don't cling to the ways of the past. You don't give a damn about a vision of things to come. You are selfish. You destroy the animals in the water. You destroy the ecosystem. You violate cosmic law of love and life. You only have two spirits of life in you. You don't have the spirit of Mozart, the spirit of intelligence in you. The spirit of Messiah. Let's keep reading. Number four. And it came to, number 41. And it came to pass that as Enoch viewed Olam and the empty spirits there, the empty barren spirits in Olam, Enoch exclaimed in amazement, all that is, Enoch says, all that is before me, Lord, in the emptiness of it, is thus void of filling. Because you have not as yet entered into it to give it the spirit of intelligence. You see now, the creeping things do not have the spirit of intelligence, which is the spirit of Messiah. Messiah have not yet entered into those things. That's why they look so dull without life, un unattached, cold-hearted, without consideration. That's why they are like that towards each other. Now, pay attention to all my precepts on the side. Go check it out yourself. We got to keep it pushing. Let's go. Let's keep going. They don't have the spirit of intelligence in them. At the bottom, let's see. And all of the wicked will find the reality of life in creation detestable without you. Yes. They don't have your spirit in them, so they're going to find the reality of life in creation detestable without you. This is why they hate the creations of God because they don't have the spirit of intelligence in them. These people are called creeping things. Let's get some more understanding. Number 45. And it came to pass when the Lord has said these words, Enoch beheld Yatsikad, Adam. Adam was dull and droopy. Enoch saw Mozart the Lamb, Yahawashai, standing there. And the light of the presence of Yahawashai came upon little Yatsikad. And Enoch saw his presence, Yahawashai's presence, enter into him, into Yatsikad. And Mozart the Lamb went as it were to enter into Yatsikad. Number 47, and when Yahawashai entered into Yatsikad as a spirit, Yatsikad looked up and he smiled and he became alive in all of his appearance. Something happened to Yatsikad. When Yahawashai's spirit got into him, the spirit of intelligence, he was no longer dull and droopy. 
He became alive. He smiled. He looked up. And he came alive in all of his appearance. And his face was bright. His eyes sparkled in the light of the Lord. And he looked around with his eyes as if he has no eyes. And it seemed to Yatsika that he had never seen with his eyes before. Why? Because now he has the spirit of intelligence. He's no longer like the creeping things. Yatsikad, Adam became aware of all things around him. Now, in the, in the documentary, you're going to see that these people are not aware of anything around them. They see everything, but they don't understand nor comprehend, nor do they care to understand nor comprehend the totality, the weight of their actions. What they're doing on the ocean, violating the ecosystem in the ocean, how it is affecting everything else in creation, the domino effect of everything else. When the spirit of intelligence, the spirit of Messiah got into Yatsikad, Yatsikad became aware of all things around him and he looked with eyes of love. The creeping things are void of love. The eyes are filled with ignorance, darkness. The light that is in them is darkness. Yatsika was happy, content. He wanted to touch everything. He wanted to play with everything. He wanted to taste all he could. And thus, it appeared before the eyes of Enoch, Yatsika became a living soul. When the spirit and the presence of Mozart the Lamb, when the spirit and the presence of Yahawashai Christ entered into Yatsikad, Yatsikad became what? A living soul. Also, he had what? What else? He had a, a vision of holiness. Remember, the creeping things only had two of the four spirits of life in them. They each had the spirit that gives them life, and they have the spirit of the Father in them. Albeit, they do not know the Father. They don't have the, the presence and the spirit of Messiah in them, and they don't have a vision of holiness. They don't have a created purpose. Yatsikad, when Messiah's spirit entered into him, he became a new creation. He was now possessed with the spirit of intelligence. Now he can see now with eyes of love. He was happy and content, wanted to touch and taste everything. These people don't have eyes of love. They have eyes of hate. They have eyes of darkness. They are ignorant. They are creeping things and crawling things. They are distant. They don't have any love. They're wholehearted. They don't have the spirit of intelligence. They, they are not living souls. The spirit of Mozart did not enter into them. You'll see. Enoch was astonished at what he saw. Let's go. Let's keep pushing. I want to show you something. The four spirits of life were complete in Yatsikad. Number 53. Okay? So now let's keep going. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Hold up. And the same thing happened to, to, uh, to uh, Naba. Same thing that happened to Yatsikad happened to Naba. Naba got the spirit of intelligence entered into her and she also became a living soul. You understand? Now check this out. Watch this. Number 56. And it came to pass that Enoch was pondering all these things. And he looked and he saw a woman. And the light of the fire shone softly upon this woman's face and her shoulder and her paps, which is her breast, and upon her arm. And she was dirty, unclean, ignorant, unkept. She was beside a fire with Yatsikad. And she was the one who had given birth to Yatsikad. And Enoch exclaimed in his astonishment, Lord, who is this woman? And the Lord says she is not a woman. 
Enoch said, what the hell? Oh, no, he didn't say that. Enoch said, but I see her breasts. Why do you say she's not a woman? And the Lord said, because she was not taken out of men. There's a Bible called the Oapsi Bible or Oapsi Bible or Oapsi Bible, whatever. Yeshua, the, the Unifier, has a couple of videos on this Oaspe Bible. And in this Bible, he talks about the creeping things. And in the book, American Holocaust, I believe in the, in the middle of the book around whatever chapter it is, there's a section in there also who talk about the creeping things. In the American Holocaust, I don't have this book. I didn't even take, I didn't even know I was going to say this in the video. She's not a woman because she didn't come. She's didn't, she was not taken out of men. So even though she looked like a woman, she had breasts like a woman. She gave birth like a woman. She was not taken out of men. That tells you right there. These were the creeping things, other creatures, right? Because this we talk about Olam here at the beginning, that lived on the earth. Who didn't have the spirit of intelligence in them. The spirit of Messiah, as we just read. She looked like, she looked like a woman, but she was not a woman because she was not taken out of men. And Enoch says, what is she? And the Lord says, she's what? She's a creeping thing. Let's go to Genesis 1 and 24. These people on the ocean, they are not people. They are what? Creeping things. Creeping and crawling things. That's who they are. Genesis 1 and 24. Through 31. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds. Let the land produce livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. What creatures did the land produce? Creeping things. Number 25. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. You understand? And God saw that it was good. So, Hold on, let me see if I could get you something real quick to give you more edification. Give me a quick thing. So the ground brought forth what? Creeping things. Give me a second. Let me see something here. Let me see something here. Let me see if I could bring you this Owaspe Bible real quick. Let me see if I could bring you this Owaspe Bible real quick. Give me a quick second. Because you need to understand these people who, who rule, who we call the wicked. All right, let's get out of here. Let's come back. Let's go to this. Watch this. Let me see. Let's leave Big Judah alone for a second. Let's, let's bring up this gentleman uh, channel up. Let's go to his channel, to his videos. Let's go down here. Yeshua, the you know, fire video, his channels. I'm on his channel. I'm on his website. Let's go to, uh, let me show you how those creeping things look like. You see that right there? See that? Oh, wasp it. Hold up. It. Praise be too. Let's see. Hold up. Let me see if I could give you guys pictures in here. If you guys pictures. If you guys pictures. Watch this. You see that? You see these Creeping things is how they walk on all fours, all hairy and stuff like that. This is what you're dealing with right here. These are the creeping things. You understand? Let me see if he has more pics here. So. This is right here. Oh, I spent no Bible. Go check out this video this brother dropped three months ago. 
these are the descendants of the people on this earth with their companies Just, you know, on our oceans. And okay? These are the people that are destroying the earth right now. These are they. And the Lord told Enoch, she's, she's a creeping thing. Why do you call her a creeping thing, Lord? What you mean by that? The Lord said, she's not a living soul. Remember, you are only a living soul. When the spirit of intelligence, the spirit of Messiah enter into you. Okay? When the Lord entered into Yatsika, number 47, or number 46, Enoch saw Mozart standing in the light of the presence of Messiah came upon little Yatsikad, and Enoch saw his presence enter into him. And when that happened, Yatsika or Adam came alive in all of his appearance. Face was bright, his eyes sparkled. It's as if he had no eyes. He became aware of all things. He wanted to touch everything. He was content, happy. Wanted to eat everything. It appeared that Yatsikad, not it appeared, Yatsikad became a living soul. When the spirit of the presence of Messiah entered into him, Yatsikad became a living soul. And the spirit of Messiah is what we call what? The spirit of what? Intelligence. That's why these people didn't have any intelligence. Enoch be hell creeping things. That's who they are. They do not have the spirit of Mozart in them. They don't have the spirit of intelligence, the spirit that gives life and that more abundantly. Okay? Let me see where I'm at. They don't have the spirit of Messiah, the spirit that gives life, that, that makes your eyes sparkle. You see? All right, hold on. I, I forgot where I was. I think I'm on this page here. Yeah, I'm on this page right here. Why you call her creeping thing, Lord? Because she's not a living soul. Genesis 1.24 Let the land produce creatures according to their kinds. This is a, a creature according to, to the land. And the creatures that move along the ground. This is a creature that move along the ground. I just showed you that in that brother's channel. She's not a living soul. These people, don't, they don't have the spirit of intelligence. They are not living souls. Okay? Let's keep going. And when Messiah says he entered into Yatsika, he became the first living soul of the natural world of this earth. Yatsika or Adam became the first flesh in Eden. Okay? And the first man also. He became the first man. Why? When he received the spirit of intelligence. These people that are on this uh, documentary, Cispiracy, they are not men. They don't have the spirit of intelligence. They don't have the spirit of Messiah. They are not living souls. They are being led by Satan. They are not being led by the all-merciful Father. They are not being led by God Almighty. You could see what else they do. It is not just on the ocean. Look at the pharmaceutical company, what they do. Look at what they do in the school system. Look at what they do in the, uh, what's the industry that run your food? The food industry. Look how they treat people. Look how they treat our brethren in the streets. Look how, how they come to our, to our lands. And they take our land by violence. That's called rapine. Violent seizure of your land. Rapine. Violent seizure of your land. They defile your women. 
They kill your men. They tear up your children apart. Okay, hold up. Let's go there. Look what they do. Let's see. I should have pictures here to show you from the American Holocaust book. What they do. What they do. This is what they do. So, I, so we're going to go in this book. These people don't have... This is what they do to you right here. Taking babies from mother's breasts, grabbing them by the feet, smashing their heads against rocks. This is what they do. Cutting people's hands. They don't have the spirit of intelligence. Burning them alive. Look at this. This is what they do. Okay? This is what they do. They don't have the spirit of intelligence. Okay? They don't have that. So these people worship the beast. Just like Napoleon did. Right? This is the... This is the book of... Uh, what is this? Napoleon book. Let's read number 15 here. What it says. And the man Napoleon held in his right hand a sword of steel. Where, whereon were engraven death, victory, conquest, you see that right there? And in his left hand, a roll of parchment, and in the roll was written the dominion of the world, and under the same names of the nations which he had conquered, and all the people within the reach of his power. And on his sandal were written, were engraven the words in letters of brass, oppression. On his right foot, there was engraving letters of brass, oppression. And on his left foot, slavery. This is what the people do in that documentary. They oppress people. They oppress. They have them in slavery. And they oppressed the oceans, the living creatures in the ocean. When our people in Britain were being wicked towards the king, Abinus, the father did this. The people of Gaul, the father says, it, it says here, it pleased the Lord as a punishment for the wickedness and perverseness of the people to deliver them into the hands of this man, Napoleon. It pleased the Lord for the wickedness and perverseness of the people to deliver them into the hands of Napoleon. For this man to have dominion over many lands that he might rule over them with a rod of iron. The father chastened the iniquity and wickedness of their ways. And he brought back from the path of sin and licentiousness and the idolatry of the beast to those of justice, moderation and truth, and the fear of the only true and living God. And the people of the land of Gaul and all the nations whom he had pleased the Lord to deliver into the hands of this strange man groaned heavily and cried unto the Lord. In the hearts for freedom, forgiveness, and mercy. These people are going to cry unto God. They're going to cry unto Yahweh Shai one day, very shortly. For forgiveness and mercy. But having forgot 
and despise the Lord their God in the pride and wickedness of the heart. The Lord God left them to reap the fruit of their evil ways. And for a season he listened not unto them in their sufferings and their distress. This is us. When we were being wicked, Father said, mm -mm, I ain't going to listen to you right now. That's going to happen to them. That's why Big Judah says, when he said, they're going to get double for all that they've done. The wise men in scripture have said that reverence for God is the beginning of knowledge. We're not going to get into that. We already know what time it is. Let's go back. Let's go back. Book of Enoch, where you at? Let's go back. Right here. Probably on this page right there. Probably right here. Okay? So, we know the ground brought forth what? Creeping thing. Let's see. These are creeping things. They don't have any love. They don't care for nature. They don't care for the trees. They don't care for the ozone. They don't care for the biological life in the, in the waters. They don't care for Sarael. They don't care for nothing. They only care for the bottom line. Listen to this. I want you to get this. And after that, we're done with this book. Page 121. Book of the Remembrance of Enoch. S in Gospel of Haggai. Or S in Book of Meditation. Number 61, bottom. And now all the elements of the creation are fully formed. And they are in their likeness before him according to his desires. Now everything is created now, right? Yatsikar and Naba, or Adam and Eve, have not in them the spirit of intelligence, the spirit of Messiah. They have not all four spirits of life in them. They have a holy created purpose. They have the spirit of intelligence. They have the spirit of the Father. They have all in them now the all four spirits. Alright? They can see with eyes of love. They are different. They are different. Now, they are different than anything else around them. Remember, there was a woman, a creeping thing. She was unclean, dirty, ignorant, unkept. She was her. She was the woman who gave birth. To who? To Yatsikad. She was the one who had given birth to Adam. Enoch saw that. He would say, what? Father said, she's not a woman. She's a creeping thing. She didn't come. She, she was not taken out of men. Only a, a, if you are a woman, you were taken out of men. She was not taken out of men. She was a creeping thing. Now remember, Olam was the earth before he became Eden. Before the spirit of Messiah got into everything in Olam... Olam was a, a place void of life. Everything was dull, cold-hearted. When the spirit of intelligence got into everything, it became paradise. It became what? Eden. Let's get the drop. And you saw, Father speaking to Enoch, he said, You saw me enter into little Yatsikad. And he became the first living soul of the natural world. Yatsikad became the first flesh in Eden. Olam became Eden. Once Messiah got into Yatsikad, everything around him changed. Olam became Eden. A place full of life, full of happiness, full of joy. Became paradise. He became the first flesh in Eden and the first man also. Number 62. And all of the rest of the creeping things are to be left behind for they are unclean before God see God chose who he wanted to choose even then everything else remained behind for they are what unclean which Enoch saw Enoch saw they were unclean they are unclean before God they are unclean why because they don't have the spirit of life the spirit of intelligence Mosiah tells Enoch, and you will see that all of the foals, creatures, and beasts that are seen by God to be clean according to his desire in visions of holiness will also come to the day of Gamal. 
And all that I enter into shall be filled with a deep and profound love. And they shall become living souls also. You see that? When you have the spirit of intelligence, you have what? You are filled with a deep and profound love. These people on the, on, on the oceans, they are not filled with a deep and profound love. Now, the gentleman who was doing the documentary is filled with a deep and profound love because he cared so much that he put his life on the line to report and bring to us what we see here. Father opened his eyes to go into, into this and do this documentary. But the creeping things, their souls, they don't have a soul. Number 64, and in their souls, those that are filled with a deep love and profound love, with a deep and profound love, in their souls they shall all know the truth. Hebrews 10 and 16. Because of the visions of holiness for men. In their souls, when you are filled with the love of God, you know the truth in your soul. Deep down, you know, you know right and wrong. You're not going to go and murder whales. They have the nerve to say killer whales. Whales don't kill, they're chilling. You go and kill the whales. You are the killer of the whales. You are the killer whales. Hebrews 10 and 16. And this is the covenant that I will make with them. After that time, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write my laws on their minds. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Why? Because the Father has written his laws on your hearts and on your minds. So you know the truth. You know right and wrong. You were sent here with a crystal, with a mark on your forehead to receive his commands directly. You have the fullness of the gospel. You know the truth. Because of the visions of holiness that the Father had put in you. You know the truth. Okay? Number 66. Oh, 55, 65. And because of this, they, everything in creation, shall turn all of their desires and all of their attention towards the first man. The first flesh in Eden. Yatsikad. So we're supposed to be taking care of creation. We're supposed to be treating them with love. Not having a blood bath. This ain't supposed to be happening. This is not it. This ain't supposed to be happening. We support, there is a price to pay for this. Let's go somewhere else. There's a price to pay for this, y'all. Let's go to the sealed portion, final testament of Jesus Christ. Let me get my notes. Give me a sec. The fact in this chapter I have to do in its entirety is going to be titled The Great Reset. This is going to be titled The Great Reset. Let's go to page... 536, number 46. Let's go to number 535, page 535, number 46. Let's go to number 46. Watch this. These people have a whole economy on the oceans where they're killing everything else to extract something so they can fight in their pockets. So you can have meat, fish, to eat at dinner. But you don't even understand. What those fishes. What they go through before it hit your plate. Guys. Look. I'm not saying you shouldn't eat meat. Or fish. You're going to have to make your own decision on that. I stopped eating meat. Years ago. I have red meat once a year during Passover. I don't eat chicken. I stopped eating fish for what, three or four years? 
I recently started eating fish again, but once a month. Now I understand better why Father took out the desire to eat meat out of my body. I can't stop eating meat cold turkey. I'm not saying you should. Some of you can't because you have medical situation that, are, that you got to eat some meat. You must eat the meat to sustain your health. But this is what Messiah says here. I'm going to tell you what Messiah says in regards to eating meat according to the final testament, the sealed portion, final testament of Jesus Christ. He says here, let's go to the title. During the days of Yatsikad, there was righteousness and happiness with our technology. Healthy living and exercise are essential for good health. During the thousand year reign of Christ, there will be no more death. There will be no more eating of the flesh. At that time, everything, everyone, every creation, every man, woman, child, every animal will follow the laws of health provided in God's plan for his children. Not just you and I, even the animals won't be allowed to eat flesh. Everything's going to be reset. These companies that are profiting on the ocean on Surah El, they will no longer be able to do business on the ocean. The great reset is coming. You're going to have a better diet, a better nutrition plan to follow. Number 45, seal portion, final testament of Jesus Christ. Chapter 92, page 535, number 45. And they shall eat the fruits of the foods. That shall be produced for them by the industry of, of production that the Lord shall set up. Wait. Yahabashai is going to have industry set up that produce fruits. Not Bill Gates buying out land to produce your food. No, he's, gonna go, he, he, he's already dead. He's a dead man walking. He's a creeping thing. He's not even a man. He's a creeping and a crawling thing. He's still in Olam. He doesn't have the spirit of intelligence, the spirit that gives life. He is void of the, of the spirit of Messiah. He walks with Satan. He has the fullness of the name of Satan written on his forehead, which is hate, jealousy, envy, killing, murder, violent seizure of someone's land, rapine, idolatry, Hormonging. That is the fullness of the name of Satan written on his forehead. You and I, we have the fullness of the name of God written on our forehead, which is love, compassion, charity. What else? Patience. Faithfulness. Gentleness, kindness, long-suffering. Thank you, I had a little brain fart. You understand? We have the fullness of the name of God written on our forehead. They have the fullness of the name of Satan written on their minds. This is why they do what they do. Well, Father says, look, when the reset during my thousand year reign, there shall be fruits, foods produced by the industry that I set up throughout the entire earth. And these foods shall be available to all people without price. You don't got to pay no more. You, don't, you will no longer have a grocery bill. No, you're going to have fruits in abundance. It will be available for you without price whenever your heart desires to have them. Number 46, there shall be no more eating of flesh upon the earth. This company... That is upon the waters, killing the aquatic life, violating the biological and cosmic law, destroying the marine life because of their money. No more. There shall be no more eating of flesh upon the earth. No more fish. No more fried chicken. No more steak. No, there's a great reset 
Father is changing your body right now and your mind. Your cells are being changed. The way you, you think, the way you feel, the way you behave. The geomagnetic grids of the earth are being shifted. Things are happening on a molecular level to change you. You don't even realize what's going on, but it's happening in increments. You're going to wake up one day, you're going to have no desire to eat flesh. There shall be no more eating of flesh upon the earth. Why? Because too much murders. Too many things are happening. Look at the bloodshed. This is what happens for you to have tuna. This is what happens for you to eat salmon and fish. Though the ocean water is stained with blood. With the blood of the creation of God. Just like the earth is stained with the blood of the sons and the daughters of God. The ocean is stained with the blood of the, of the whale, of the seal, of the fish, of the turtle, of the other animals in there. And there is a price to pay. These creeping and quoting things, void of the spirit of intelligence. They don't have the spirit of God in them. They are cold, cold-hearted, unaffectionate, unloving. They walk with Satan. They're being led by Satan. They have the fullness of the name of Satan written on their forehead. They were sent here with a mark on their forehead to receive from Satan directly. They are the creeping and the crawling things. These are your earthly diaspora. They are created to be different. They were created with a lower spiritual capacity. They were not created in the presence of the Most High Power in the kingdom, kingdom of lights. No, these are Olamites. They are citizens of Olam. They are not the seed of Jacob. They are not sons of Abraham. These are Olamites. They were left behind when Olam was transferred into Eden. And they spread throughout the earth. These are they. These are their ancestors. They have lost control of the earth. You understand what I mean? I'm so upset. I'm so pissed. Because I love the ocean. A divine plan has been issued to balance the earth because of these creeping, crawling things have violated cosmic law of light and love. So a plan has been issued to negate their violation and their destruction of the atmosphere. Men, creeping things, have shown that they have lost control of the planet by the virtue of the danger that they not only present for themselves, but also for the surrounding planetary environments in their pursuit of money. They don't have any spiritual understanding. They cause destruction to many biological kingdoms on this planet. A divine plan has been issued to sink their battleship. They don't cling to the ways of the ancient ones. Their gentle ways of peace and quietness. They follow Satan. That's their daddy. These are sons of Satan. You understand? Let's go back. Let's go to page 536, number 49 and 50. Did I go there already? Page 536, number 49 and 50. 536, final testament of Jesus Christ. I just read that for you, right? Right here. Father says, Blessed, behold how blessed shall be the day of the Lord in the establishment of the plan of the Father upon the earth for the wicked. What is the day of the Lord to you? Is not the day of the Lord darkness and deep darkness? For those people destroying the ocean, the biological life form in the ocean, under the waters, on the earth, 
causing the oxygen reduction in the, in the atmosphere? Is in the day of the Lord darkness and deep darkness to you? What is it to you? But for the righteous, blessed shall be the day of the Lord. How glorious shall be that time when there exists no more death. No more violent seizure of land by rape, by murder, by robbery. No more getting shot in the back of your head. No more pharmaceutical companies poisoning you. No more vaccines. No more death. No more poisonous food. No more death. No more murdering wells and seals. Killing turtles. No more bycatch. No more death. How glorious shall be that time. No more murder of an animal for food. No more eating of the flesh. No more. Murder of an animal for food. Neither by the hand of men. Or by other nature. Which causes the animal to eat one another. To maintain the balance thereof. No more imbalances on the earth. Welcome to a perfect earth. Welcome to a new reset upon this planet. Welcome. I can't wait for that day. No more. How blessed shall be the day of the Lord. In the establishment of the plan of the Father upon the earth. During these days, the animals upon the earth shall not fear men. Neither shall men fear any animal. And all animals shall be changed by the command and by the knowledge of Yahweh Shai. Which shall fill the earth and instruct all his holy angels and servants to change the nature, to change the bodies of the animals on the earth by his command. That's what I've been telling you. You are being changed right now. No more death. No more killings. No more. No more cis piracy. No more bycatch. No more bloodbath. No more creeping and crawling things. No more. Father gonna do away with them. No more. No more of these people. No more. These are monsters. These are sons of Satan. You understand? Number 62. Book of the remembrance of Enoch, Essen, Gospel of Haggai. Set 4 and 62. Page 122. Number 62. And all of the rest of the creeping things are to be left behind. For they are unclean before God. You understand? They are unclean before God. Let's wrap this up. These people got me so freaking upset. Sarah L. Power of God. Oceans. 13th from the Bariel is Oceans. This is what ocean were created to do. The ocean was not created to mourn the death of the life that she beholds. She was not created to cry tears of sadness and sorrow and grief. When the ocean cries, there is a tsunami that comes because her tears overwhelmed her waters and her waters got to go and violate the shores. When she cries and when she's in pain, the father sends tsunamis. This is why there are tsunamis because the ocean crying for the bloodshed. For the violation, for the disrespect, for the killing, senseless killing. These people, they, they, they destroy their own land and now they go to the coast of Africa to steal from the local Fisheries from the local fishermen. That reminds me of the sons of Noah. When Noah divided the earth, he gave some to Shem, some to uh, some to him, some to Japheth. And now I think they made a covenant to respect each other's lands. And one of them violated that covenant. Oceans. You know I love the oceans. 13th from the bar real is ocean. What is the spiritual number, spiritual meaning of the number 13th? We got to look into that. Her name is Sarael, which means the power of God. 
She teaches humility and the need to depend upon God and upon righteousness. You see, if you're creepy and crawling things, you cannot be on the ocean. That's why the Father says, I have cursed the waters in the last days. These people don't belong in the ocean. That's why the Father gave our people sovereignty on the ocean. King Albinus ruled the oceans. The oceans are ours to benefit us, not them. Welcome your new reset. Hasten the time by prayer. She teaches humility and the need to depend upon God and upon righteousness. These people are doing unrighteousness on Surahel. The true navigators of the sea, like King Albinus, who do not use the deck of the sea, or their children can listen to the sea and watch the sea for signs and taste her and sense her swells and find a way by the shining of the light in the waters. She is the guardian of sacred places and lands. Yes, because by the sea, you travel to other lands, other places. She is the elder of the holiness that is by decree. The father says, respect your elders. These people disrespect the elders. She is the birthplace of days. She calls forth the sun. The sun rises from the east out of the ocean. She is the strong angel that challenges pride in a holy spirit. Sarael teaches men to love. These people are void of love. They are cold-hearted. They kill people on the ocean and dump the dead body on the ocean. When they have their freaking, um, their cruise ships with thousands of people on the cruise ship, they dump all the waste on the ocean. They contaminate the ocean. They travel. They have their freaking uh, oil rigs on the ocean. They dump oil on the ocean. They commit murder on the ocean. They transport drugs on the ocean. Human trafficking on the ocean. They, they go in and, 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 and commit whoredom on the ocean. And worship Satan on the ocean. She's going to challenge the pride. She's going to challenge the Holy Spirit. She teaches men to love. These people don't love. She is the master of those who embark on a mission for God. The swells and feelings and breezes of the ocean can invite a little child to give their life to God. Before you approach Sarael first, repent for pride. These people don't give a damn. They don't even know. They don't have the spirit of intelligence in them. She is the enemy of nations and the governments of men. Yes, she's the enemy. They don't even realize that. She is the body of the life of God. She is the supreme herald of patience. When she suffers, there you go. When she suffers, when Sarah L suffers, when the ocean suffers, or she's pressed open to change, even slightly, all mankind will suffer. That's why they say in the Big Judah video, shows you right here, no more fish by 2048. Empty oceans by 2048. Why? Because she suffers. That's why Yahawashah is not going to let for 2048 to come. He's going to come to sink. He's going to come to sink your battleship right now. When she suffers, everybody else suffers. Because the ocean is like a domino effect. Whatever happens on the ocean is going to happen on the earth a thousand times more. She is the grandmother of all life. Can you imagine? Your mother gave birth to you, but you better give more respect to your mother's mother. Why? Because if your mother's mother wasn't there, your mother will never be here and you will never, never, never be here.
She is the grandmother of our life. Her strength and her power and her grace and her beauty are the delight of the souls of God. She will be the chief accuser of the kings of the earth at the day of judgment. There you go. Hold on tight, creeping, crawling things. Hold on tight. She will be your chief accuser. At the day of judgment. She will be your chief accuser at the day of judgment. When the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. Proverbs 29 and 2. That's where we headed right now. We are headed towards rejoicing. Because the righteous is going to rule the earth. No more bloodshed, y'all. Let me leave you with this. Let me leave you with this. I can't tell you what book I'm reading this from. Because I have very special instruction from the book. Not to reveal where this book come from. But let's read lesson 21. The master explains man's power to choose. Oh master. Can we not know of a certainty when these things will come to pass? Or whether they will happen at all? The master replies and says, Oh, child of earth, think not that the father controls the destiny of his children like puppets on a string. The children of earth are free to choose. Those who choose wisely and learn all of the holy laws of God and obey them shall have great abundance. Both now in this time and beyond the veil also. Do not fret overly much about the destruction of the world. Have I not already told you that you are eternal? Why do you cling to temporal things and tremble to see the eternal things? Enjoy the temporal things and use them with wisdom. Use the temporal things with prudence while you are upon the earth. But do not seek them with thought. Do not seek them with thought of power, for there is no power in them. Do whatever you can to teach others the folly of greed. And lead as many as you can into pathways of truth. More than that, you cannot do. Prepare them now for the things that are to come, both upon the earth. And beyond the earth. Beloved, here you have it. Prepare your mind for the things that are to come both upon the earth and beyond the earth. A Baba was sent to teach the people how they must conduct their lives in holiness, in purity, in love, in compassion, in righteousness, in peace, in faith. He was sent to teach the people how they must conduct themselves so that they too can cross over. How they, how they must prepare their minds for what was about to come upon the earth and what is coming upon the earth. Yahweh Christ is coming upon the earth. Let me show you what's coming upon the earth right now and then we'll end with that. Let me show you real quick. Let's go to Revelation Revelation 19. Let's go to verse 11. We're not going to go to verse. Let's go to Revelation 19. Um, all right, I don't know how to make verse 11. Let's see. Revelation. Revelation 19. Let's close with that. Let's close with Revelation 19. Hmm? Let's go Revelation 19. What's coming? Let's get it. 
Now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he who sat on it was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew but himself. He was clothed with a rope dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. You see how they, they, tinting, they, tint, they tinted the waters, the oceans with blood? Well, Yahawashah is coming back with a rope dipped in blood. Their blood. His name is called the word of God. And the armies of heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed Yahawashah on their white horses. Now out of his mouth goes out a sharp sword. That with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He will treat the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty God. He has on his robe and on his thigh a name written. King of kings and lords and lord of lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun. And the angel cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings. Gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of captains. The flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all creeping, crawling things, the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, I saw the armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his home. And against his army. Then the beast was captured. And with the beast. The false prophet also. Who worked signs in his presence. By which he deceived those. Who received the mark. Of the beast. And those who worship his image. These two. Were cast alive. Into the lake. Of fire burning with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword. Which proceeded forth from the mouth of him. Who sat on the horse. And all the birds were filled with their flesh. There you have it beloved. See spiracy. These are not people. These are creepy, creeping, and crawling things. Void of the spirit of intelligence. Void of the spirit of Messiah. Void of love. Empty, filled with darkness. Violators of cosmic law of love and life. Their reign upon this earth is over. Yahweh Shai is coming back. But he's coming back with a rope dipped in blood. He's coming back to literally sink their battleship.